Okay. Um, so this year defensively, um, we had a really good year, 5.9 points per game, uh, seven defensive shutouts, um, set school records and points per game and yardage allowed. Um, like I was saying, Coach Hickman and I um, sat through at the end of the year and were able to go through and uh, essentially name off all the touchdowns that we gave up. Um, and so it was a really, really good year defensively for us. Um, defensive accolades, we had nine. I think we ended up having nine all-conference selections. Um, and then what we do, I feel like, is great stuff defensively. Um, but at the same time, we had a lot of dudes this year on, on that side of the ball uh, who could really get after it and really play. Um, so they were, they were definitely the key uh, to our success. Um, so why this defense, why the odd front for me? Um, I played in uh, kind of a, a multiple odd front uh, and then uh, coached in it as well. And so the D-line stuff that I'm going to talk about today is stuff that I've got from uh, Scott Johnson at Starmont High School. Um, and it's just kind of stuff that uh, basic fundamental building blocks and we just kind of uh, layered on top of that as we went. And when I got here with Brett, um, we had – I had a pretty good idea of what we wanted to do. Um, but over the past couple of years, it's kind of morphed into something new. Um, and it's not, you know, like he had his defense, I had my defense, and now uh, we've kind of over time created our defense, which um, I'm very proud of. Um, so the odd front for us allows us to um, play to our strengths here. Um, we have really, really athletic defensive linemen. Um, and – them being able to move the way that we want them to move um, really gives us, I think, a huge advantage uh, in the odd front. Um, and I'm, we're going to, you know, look at some stuff here in a second. Um, three technique, we do a really good job. Um, our defensive line coach, Woody Dunn, and our inside backers coach, uh, Mike Lotz, they do a really good job of um, teaching technique. And our guys are very, very fundamentally sound. Um, so we take a lot of pride in that. The odd front also – creates the way we use it and you know with our slant and angle it's kind of old slant and angle 50 um, those movements but it creates a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups in the front and I think it's very hard for high school offensive linemen to talk about double teams um, and it's really hard for them to take steps and trust their movements or trust their assignments uh, when the guy may be moving and may not be where he's supposed to be like you would get in a static even front. Um, now, there will be times when we get, you know, an, we'll talk about that here in a second, but we get an over and an under front um, and, and just get lined up and play ball. Uh, but most of the time, you're going to see us in 404 bringing a reduction. Um, we don't two gap. Now, this past year, I kind of got away from that and we let our guy, um, we let our, our Shrine Bowler, Jamie McRae, is at ECU right now, um, we let him two gap a little bit. Uh, and then we did some other stuff with him, uh, just trying to, you know, use his, his size and his athleticism and get him in some one-on-one in some -on -one situations where he could be successful. Um, and I think the biggest thing for us is up front, uh, in, in as far as defensive line play goes, um, it's very, very hard for um, teams, I think, I would, I would think other teams to simulate how fast and how hard we slant and angle. Uh, and move in the front and then also to pick up where we're coming from um, and, you know, bringing the fourth rusher. Um, so up front, you know, fundamentally, that's why we do what we do. Uh, and we, you know, last, the first year at West, I was probably, we would get to a kick front or an even front um, probably 30% of the time. And then the other 70%, probably 80, 90% of that was a boundary reduction. Um, this past year, we got away from that and, and brought a few more, um, a few more looks where the fourth rusher was not that that boundary defensive end or boundary outside linebacker anymore. It could have been the Mike, the Will, the Spur, the Dog. Um, so, based on line, I'm gonna try to pull up on uh, or probably um, pull up here on huddle, so you can see. Um, Thought I had it pulled up. Sorry, guys. Um, so, 
this past year we ended up um, having a uh, running a little more match concepts than we did um, the year before. Um, this past year, we we or the first year at West, um, Brett is a defensive backs coach. Uh, he's our DBs coach, and he does a really good job with those guys in the back. Um, and he had his auto check system, but we felt like moving forward, uh, we need to be able to run a little more one high, create some more clear flat force flat defenders. And so we ended up running a little more um, match concepts. Um, but for us, we're a field boundary team. Um, and so this would be what you would get from us alignment wise. Um, our bandit is the boundary outside linebacker, our spurs, the field outside linebacker. Uh, end is the field defensive end, the nose, and then the boundary tackle uh, with the mic and the wheel. Um, this past year, it got to be, and you know, I kind of hesitate to say this because everybody says it now, but it got to be a little bit more positionless uh, based on the calls and, um, you know, with, without trying to give away too much of the secret sauce. Uh, we'll go through some of that here in just a second. Um, but that right there is kind of our day one install bound, you know, looking at how we line up. Uh, more specifically, I'm going to look at um, the front and defensive line play. Um, so we'll get back to that. Um, we can easily uh, line up with the strength. The majority of the time we're field boundary um, defense. So, you know, it's, a, it's very easy to get lined up, very simple. Uh, but when we play wing T teams, when we play teams who will, you know, uh, FSL or get formation into the boundary, uh, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll check to our strength calls um, to where we can get the, the personnel that we want um, on the tight end or on the wing um, and where we want them. The reason, uh, and a lot of this, you know, everybody, there's a thousand different ways to skin a cat. This is just the way we skin it. Kind of my defensive philosophy is I want to put the best tacklers and the best playmakers in a spot in a position where they're going to have the most chance and the most opportunity to make plays. Um, like normally our boundary tackle, because we bring a boundary reduction, that's probably going to be our best, one of our best defensive linemen. Now, this past year, uh, if you've got a dominant nose, um, like we did with Javian, um, you know, it, it really does a whole lot else, you know, a whole lot more stuff for you. Uh, makes a lot more sense for you to put him there. Uh, but most time, our boundary tackle is going to be the guy who makes a lot of hay for us in the, um, in the defense. We can also get to an over or an under front um, relatively easy with, you know, just a check. When we do that, the majority of the time we move into like an under G front where um, that guy won't be in a shade. We'll put him in a two eye uh, and let him play heavy on that. But we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. So um, with the kind of the thing that I'm going to slow down on and talk a lot about today is the defensive line play just because I feel like, you know, um, that is in high school football where you can dominate games. Um, you can get guys unpredictable down in distances, which is, you know, um, what we want here at West is to get you in a predictable situation where then I can dial something up on third and seven or we can get our defensive line and give them a call um, to where they can really go and pin their ears back and get the quarterback and then do some different things um, that cause people trouble. Um, our D lineman stance, so we talk a lot. This is day one stuff, day one install, um, where our stance, that's the very first thing we go over. Um, what we talk to our guys about is, you know, defensive line, we're not trying to play in space. Um, if our defensive linemen were that good in space, we would have them playing linebacker or DB. Um, and we want them to play on blocks and to play, um, you know, a yard. We talk a lot about yard in the backfield. You need to be um, no, no deeper than a yard in the backfield unless you're getting a pass or getting a high hat. Um, so some key points to the stance. Um, we talk a lot about hand nearest ball is down, foot nearest ball is back. Um, we let our noses four point um, just because they're going to be L stepping every time. Um, but the reason we do hand nearest, and I, you know, I know a lot of guy odd front guys or you know defensive line or shuffle guys or stay square guys. We're we're not, uh, and I'm you know I'll talk about that here in a second. Um, toe to end step or heel, we don't want it uh, much further apart than that. A little bit wide, feet a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. Um, knees, and this is the last thing and the most important thing, um, flat back and knees inside the ankles. Uh, knees inside the ankles, any athletic movement starts with uh, you being able to put force into the ground. And so with our D-Lime and teaching these guys, okay, hey, go ahead and preload your bodies um, to 
and create a really, really good stance so that you can move and be an athlete. Um, so our day one stuff that we talk about to the ball and away from the ball, those are our two defensive line movements. They'll do it based on where the ball's at and which direction they hear. Um, you know, those guys, I think, at defensive line wise, they have the toughest, um, they have the toughest time um, because they're in the trenches every single play. Um, and so we try to make stuff as simple as possible for them. Um, the hardest D line movement that we get our guys to do is this, you know, to the ball. We call it wide, skinny, flat. Uh, and basically, I've heard, you know, I've heard 45, 60, 90. Uh, you know, I know um, Will Clark, he, he talked about that at the Eastern North Carolina um, Clinic. But for us, our guys, we want to talk about the very first step to the ball. So if I'm, you know, if I'm the right tackle and I get a, and the ball's to the left and I get a Louis call or a left call, um, we want to talk about getting width uh, with that first step. So quick four, six inch step, get that foot into the ground, keep the knee inside the ankle. Um, and then the second thing we talk about is get, get skinny. Um, you need to get the guy, your eyes on the guy you're attacking. So if we're talking about, okay, uh, we're moving, I'm lined up, you know, and then head up four and I'm moving down into reducing into a three. I want to get my eyes on that guard and read what he's doing. Um, the hardest thing to get them to do and our guys to do is to really get their hands on that guy. Um, if he's pulling, getting that back hip. Um, but I think, you know, with Javian, um, our kid, he played our boundary boundary tackle um, when we got first got here. And this is the thing that I think got him a lot of exposure was it unlocked his athleticism. And what that does to the offense is it creates a lot of problems um, if you're pulling that guard. If you're pulling that guard away from that guy, um, you're going to have a really time, hard time cutting our guys off with that backside tackle. And if you do cut them off with the, the center, then that's going to create its own problems with the nose. Um, and so we talk a lot about get skinny and then get flat. We don't want to be deeper than one yard. Uh, we don't want to be deeper than one yard back. Um, at the same time, um, we also talk about, you know, what happens when um, we don't get a pull or we get, you know, a block to us. Uh, and we'll go over that here in a second. Um, the second thing we talk about is moving away from the ball. Moving away from the ball is a simple L step um, for us, okay? And it's just a four, four to six inch step wide, get width, then get vertical. But the most important thing um, is do not get reached by the offensive tackle. Uh, or the nose, or the center, excuse me, if you're the nose. Um, so our boundary four tech, um, if, he gets, if he gets a movement into the boundary and he's slanting to the boundary, his number one thing he can't do is get reached by the offensive tackle or let anything cross his face. That's his gap. That's his responsibility. Now, we talk a lot about, okay, on that vertical step, we want to take his heart out. Um, and so what that – that's a key for our D lineman, you know, elbow tight, thumb up, take his heart out heart out with my, my inside hand uh, and then fight that reach block. Um, it's always easier to recover to a down block if you're moving, uh, if you're moving into a five tech from a four tech. Um, it's really, really easy to get your, you know, get your hand on that guy, get back down inside, attack the hip, but it all goes back to, you know, knees inside the ankles and be super athletic. Um, another thing we talk about a lot with our guys um, is – Okay, box, force, and spill. Who's responsible for what? Um, our bandits and, you know, spurs, and this is the, you know, the thing in the odd front. And this past year, I took over the job of coaching these outside linebackers um, just to make sure I was getting what I wanted from them. Um, but one, our bandits, they, one, we got to be aware of what formation we're getting. Um, two, we got to be aware if we've got flat force help. And then three, if we don't have, we get a three by one set and we don't have any help in the alley or in the force. Um, and, you know, we're naked over there. We're going to box everything back in um, and send it to, you know, our inside linebackers. Um, you know, one of these things that we talk about a lot, and I know Brett talks about it with our, our secondary guys, and I talk about it all the time uh, in, in film meeting is, you know, I can create a perfect world before the ball snap, but after the ball snap, you got to be a ball player. Uh, and I'm going to try to give you the tools. You know, we talk to our guys, we're going to try to give you the tools to be successful. But at the same time, uh, after the ball snap, it's your responsibility to go be a football player. 
Um, and so we talk a lot about creating, I talk about in our meetings, creating the triangle. Um, and I'll draw it up on the board here, here in just a second. Um, but we want to create a triangle to limit explosives. So essentially, have getting, you know, one guy on each near hip of the ball carrier, and then one guy floating over top in case somebody loses contain. Uh, and then, you know, near hip, near foot, near shoulder uh, tackling. We're shoulder tackling team, hawk tackling team, whatever you want to call it. Um, but our guys in, you know, this past year was a little bit different than any other time in my coaching career was um, that in practice, we were not in, you know, we, the first week we came out and first day of contact, we did a little bit of, uh, you know, some controlled um, Oklahoma, I guess you would say. And our guys were out there being super physical. And so, you know, Coach Hickman was like, I've seen enough. We've got dudes that'll hit, hit you. Um, but at the same time, you want to you wanna save your guy's body, but at the same time, you want them to be physical. And our guys, um, we track and tackle every day. Every position group does. Uh, we work on tracking near show, you know, near hip, near number. Um, you know, some some guys call it the Georgia box drill or, or whatever it may be. Um, but we do a really good job of tracking and tackling uh, every single day. Um, so with that being said, um, I'm just going to kind of throw up or show on this on the screen. Um, or I've got a white board behind me. Let me see if I can stop. Brett, can you see me now? You can see me? Good now? Okay. All right. Um, so basically, can you see that board? Okay. Um, so this would be our basic bench reduction. Um, you got 404, um, head up, everybody's head up. Um, the biggest thing that I think we do a really good job of is this guy right here. Uh, that boundary tackle is usually our one of our best defensive linemen. Uh, and he does a really good job of, okay, first step, so knees inside my ankles, if I get a Roger Roger call, I want to be wide. Um, and then we talk a lot about getting our shoulders skinny. Um, one, to create, if I do get a down block, creates a very, very small surface for, for the offensive lineman to block. Um, and so we were talking about getting wide, getting skinny, uh, and then reading, reading the shoulder of that guard. When we read Read the shoulder of that guard. If he gets a down block, then we talk a lot about, okay, I'm trying to take his heart out with my, my near hand, um, but at the same time, I'm working that off hand to his near hip. Uh, we talk about squeezing the, squeezing the hip and making it really, really hard and really, really clean looks for our inside backers. Um, we do a really, really good job, our guys up front, of understanding, okay, I may not make the tackle, but I'm going to make the play with how I play my technique. Um, so get wide, get skinny. Um, if we get a pull, that's become the easy part in our defense. That was the hardest thing, I think, for our guys to understand um, initially was if I'm getting skinny, I can make that play in the backfield. Our guys are technically sound enough and athletic enough that if you get a pull and guard, Okay, whatever you may have, whatever look you may have, you get, you know, just a simple counterplay. Um, if you get that look like right there, that's a really, really hard block for a high school offensive tackle. Um, incredibly hard block to wall him off and to keep our one of our better defensive line athletes from making that play. Um, one of the things I think, <clears throat> you know, in year one, we got kind of predictable, which is okay because, like I said, the biggest advantage for us is how we move and people having to practice that uh, in a day-to-day, -day, you know, for week-to-week -week scenario. One of the things that we had a lot of success with this year was um, changing up where the defensive line was moving while staying sound in the back end. Um, so a lot of times, 
a lot of times our fits, and this is why we moved to kind of our match concept, um, our fits would get a little bit muddy um, with how we were trying to insert the safety uh, into the boundary, um, into the run game. And so what our match concept allowed us to do was get, so if we get a three by one set, whatever it may be, um, our spur is gonna be our adjuster, okay? So we all the time talk about, okay, our dog or a strong safety, he's gonna, he's gonna go too strong. And then it's, this was our best ball player. And so when Brett and I sat down in the off season, we talked about, okay, this is our guy that we wanna get into, um, into the fit as much as possible, but let him go make plays. <clears throat> so if we get this movement right here, um, and so this formation, then our spur is gonna be the adjuster. So now we're not gonna have, you know, we're not gonna have this player, we're gonna have a dog sitting out here um, because we're one hop. But now the spur's moved over here. Well, what we've done, all we've done is went to essentially a four, three look. And we get a little bit predictable, we got a little bit predictable um, with our boundary reductions. So that would be still our boundary call. Um, but a lot of times what, what we saw happen um, later on in the season was, okay, when we do this, um, people may pick up on it, but when we throw our change up, we throw our curveball with switching up where the reduction's coming from, whether it be, you know, everybody stepping out, bringing it inside back, or, or switching up the movement entirely and bringing this guy up, creates a lot of confusion for these high school offensive linemen which is what we want. Um, so that's kind of just a basic overview of what we do. Uh, if anybody's got any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Um, otherwise, I just thought we'd kind of sit here and look at some fits um, with what we did this past year. So Brett, anybody got any questions so far? Good to go? All right. <clears throat> So up front this past year, um, this is like one of these examples I was giving you about, um, you know, how we aligned. So we already had our strong safety rolled down, a little match concept. Um, Brad does a really good job of adjusting um, our DBs, um, getting them into the right checks and the right calls where we're not susceptible. Uh, one of the reasons we went to this match concept is because we looked back and – over the film in the past for the, from year one, um, we got hit in the post quite a bit. Um, a lot, we gave up a ton of explosive plays into the post. And so what we want to do is one, to clear up the run fits, go ahead and roll that guy down into the boundary, but at the same time, um, still be able to maintain, you know, what I think is our big advantage. And that's how we move up front with the defensive line. Um, we move that guy into the post and we really had a ton of success um, but at the same time, you know, when you play one high defense, you got to have really, really good dudes out here. Um, and this guy down at the bottom of the screen is probably one of the best around here. Uh, he does a good job manning everybody up. Um, and so we were essentially able to put him out there on, a, on an island by himself uh, and then, you know, pretty much just go play defense everywhere else. Um, but just in this scenario, so what we get right here, is a little, it's a Roger Roger movement. Um, so we're bringing this boundary reduction from here. You have your screen here. Say what? All they see is you talking right now. Do you have your oh, screen? Yeah, sorry. Hold on, gotcha. Technology, man. There we go, right? Yep, good. Okay. All right, sorry. Um, so, yeah, like I was saying, these two corners allow us to get into a single high look and feel really comfortable about, you know, if you're going to take a shot offensively um, and you feel like it's a 50-50 ball, um, this guy down here pretty much turns it into a 90-10 a ball for us in, in our favor. This guy up here does a really good job of turning 50-50 balls into probably 70-30 balls for us. Um, and so we feel really comfortable with those odds. Um, you know, if you're talking about, I don't know that this guy at the bottom had a deep ball caught on him all year, 
Um, and so that allows us to do some things up front and in the run game and in with our run fits. Um, allows me to get a little bit exotic with what we do. Um, so right here, we're going to get a Roger Roger movement. I know it's kind of hard to see with this angle. Um, the one guy down here who's who's highlighted. So if he's getting a Roger Roger movement, his number one goal is to not get reached by this offensive tackle. Um, so he does a very good job. You see with the first step, um, does a good job getting his hands on the guy. He's getting doubled by the wing. That with the coverage that we're in and the match coverage, when our spur backer gets that down block from the wing, he knows right then and there he can go ahead and fit. Um, what you're going to see is a lot of guys here doing what they're coached to do. Um, our L step here um, at the nose, he's going to cross the center's face. Um, our backside tackle, he's going to take a really good angle. And uh, we talk all the time in film about up front and an inside linebacker taking away space. Um, and that's one of the things I think our guys have understood. You notice our backside tackle, and I know it's kind of hard with the streaming, um, but our backside tackle, he doesn't float upfield. Uh, everybody see, gets flow and they work flat. Uh, when you work upfield, you know, and I'm not, I know I'm not saying anything that you guys don't already know, um, but with defensive linemen, nothing good happens from them floating upfield uh, and working upfield. And our guys have really done a good, a really good job of understanding, okay, I've got to work flat, get flat, uh, and try to take away the space uh, as much as possible. Um, the backside tackle is trying to wall our backside defensive end. Um, that's a really, 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 really hard block for a high school offensive lineman. Um, and what you see happen here, and this is one of the other reasons that we went to our match concept, uh, was because it creates really, really clean angles, force angles uh, for our outside linebackers and for our safeties. Um, they can see right away where their foot fit is and what they're supposed to do. And so what you see right here happen is all these guys force really hard, make, make the running back stop, and then we clean it up. Um, with the backside or with the nose, the backside defensive end and the backside inside linebacker. Um, and so this is kind of the perfect example of what kind of defense we want to play, um, the speed at which we want to play, and then kind of the technique that we want to play. Um, so this is one of our defensive – this is our look where I was talking about um, we, we do a really good job of being able to get into a strength call. Um, and not just be field or boundary, um, but be strength call and get the call to the strength, how we want to slant. Um, right here, what you're going to see is essentially we've come out running a, a cover three uh, look to just a basic wing T set. Um, one of the things we found in, the, in year one um, was playing how to play a wing or how to play a tight end. And so we've, uh, <laughs> year one, this guy down here at the bottom, the guy we had playing on the tight end, he was a D lineman, and he had a really, really good <laughs> – he did a really good job of getting his hands on where they were supposed to be um, and squeezing the hip, and he did such a good job that he was taking himself out of the play on buck sweep. So when we get a wing now, we'll go wing adjust and essentially just play heavy on the inside uh, hat of the wing. Um, right here you can see – Okay, get a down block. He doesn't get inside of it, but at the same time, um, he does a good job of fitting and forcing. Um, like this is high school football is obviously not a um, perfect world scenario, and so in this movement right here, our defensive, our nose tackle goes the wrong way. Um, but we do talk to our inside linebackers a lot about it's your job uh, with how we move and how our defensive line moves. Um, to make those guys right up front. So if they take the wrong step, it's your job to adjust on the fly uh, and, and clean it up for us. Um, right here, you can see our, our front side, inside linebacker. Um, he takes the path of least resistance, but it's so fast and so fluid everywhere else um, that he does it. We, we clean it up for a negative play. Um, so one of the things that we ended up having a lot we we did a really good job of getting people into predictable down and distances 
Uh, and I just wanted to talk a second about um, this boundary uh, outside linebacker position that we have. Um, guy from longtime NFL coach, Bob Sanders, came and spoke to us this summer. And uh, one of the things, and I, and I took over the outside linebackers this past year, and one of the things that we talked a lot about um, and that he talked a lot about was coaching these outside guys and getting them to embrace the idea of you got to get on the block before you get off the block, uh, whether it be box or spill um, or, you know, wrong arming or whatever it is you guys teach, um, not taking the path of least resistance and doing a good job of box, um, getting on the block in order to do his job and free up everybody else um, at the point of attack. So right here, this is, um, this is just a really good example of, um, so this is our good ath, our really, really good athlete. He played a lot of nose for us this past year, but in this down and distance, um, he's getting a Louis Louis call. And so this is an example of how hard and how fast we move. It's hard for offense, high school offensive linemen to really do a good job of cutting, cutting those guys off from the backside. And so in that scenario, we do a really good job of getting a negative play on third and short. <clears throat> so um, that's just a basic overview. I'll, uh, I can definitely answer any questions if anybody's got any. Um, that's just kind of the meat and potatoes, um, basic overview of kind of what we do. Uh, at West Brunswick. It's not anything groundbreaking. It's not anything revolutionary. Um, but at the same time, I feel like we do a really good job up front, in the front of teaching those guys good technique um, and then putting guys in positions to make play. And a lot of, you know, high school football, a ton of it is week to week, um, game to game, making those subtle adjustments, but staying true to what you do uh, defensively. Um, I think I've got on my screen, let's see, maybe not that one. Um, yeah, so this is my contact information. Um, if anybody has any questions or if, you know, I can be of any help, um, you guys can feel free, maybe, if I can get it to pull up. Maybe. Just get in touch with Brett if you need me. <laughs> so, uh, Mark Duncan asked a question. Um, all you guys can hear me. What is our match concept, Mark? All we're doing on that is our dog's going to line up outside of too strong. I mean, you people would say we're a man-free football team, and then we call some cover three. We're a man-match team, so we're carrying verticals with all those guys, and our spur is lining up off of two weak, three strong. So when you get two back sets, um, it looks like we're in basically a stack three or a four three look like Caleb was, Caleb was saying earlier. So hopefully that answers your question about what we're doing on the back end. Now, I'm going to um, if you guys see me, what I want y'all to do um, right now, because I'm not opening this thing up, um, I'm doing this one kind of as a closed session. Um, and I, I think what's happening, the hackers got the tweets um, that I'm putting on Twitter. If you want uh, this next code, I do not get great service in my classroom. Go to my Twitter if you have a Twitter and I will DM it to you, or you can text me at 980-295-4704, 980-295-4704, because I'm about to create a new meeting uh, with Coach Weaver, and I'm going to try and get going here um, about 310. So that'll do it for Caleb's session, but we've got about 20 minutes. So my cell number is 980-295-4704 or at Coach Hick and tweet at me uh, as I go set up the meeting um, for what we're going to do. All right, see ya. Thanks.